If you want to guarantee that you win, you need to understand a simple formula, but I'm not just going to give you the formula, I'm actually going to break down the different components of how to actually excel in the areas that most agents are unfortunately lacking. If you're struggling right now and you're not where you want to be, this simple concept could completely change your business forever, but you need to understand some of the principles that I'm not only going to break down, but I don't usually see anybody talking about. So without further ado, let's give you not only the formula, but also the recipe of how to win as a real estate agent. What's up guys, my name is Mike Sherrard with the Expert Realty. I train thousands of agents every year to skyrocket their business, but this is a really important concept for me, which is winning. And not only do a lot of agents tend to overcomplicate what it takes to excel as a real estate agent, but simultaneously, most aren't even looking at the root cause. They're looking for the next tip, trick, or tutorial, which is great and that's necessary, but it's not going to be the defining factor as to whether or not you win. You see, success or winning is a byproduct of two different things, which is mental and environmental. So it comes down to your mindset as well as your ecosystem or your environment. And I want to break down both simultaneously, but also I want to give you a couple really tactical examples of what you can do today in order to make an immediate difference in your business. There's one simple concept that I'm going to break down and once I applied it, which is very, very simple by the way, I 10 X my business in 12 months. So let's dive straight in. Okay. So first let's talk about the mindset aspect of it. And I want to break down a couple different things that are extraordinarily important. You see the number one reason why realtors fail in business is mindset. It's not the broker, the brokerage, the market, the economy, interest rates, any of that. It is mindset. And there's proof to that when you look at the fact that there's been agents crush it and skyrocket their business in terrible markets and great markets and average markets. So what's the defining factor and what's the difference between the ones that crush in every market and the ones that leave the business and play the blame game? mindset. So let me break down a couple of different important concepts related to mindset that you can apply today. So the first one is going to be what kind of information and knowledge are you actually consuming? And so when you look at agents that are struggling, they are consumed by politics, by the news, by headlines, by interest rates, by everything that's going on external in the world. They're watching Netflix. They're looking at the news. They're looking at articles. And they're getting distracted by all these fear tactics that are journalism and everything else going on in the world. So is that what you need to be consuming if you want to change your business and change not only your life, but your family's life? Or as you can see beside me, should you be reading books? Should you be listening to podcasts? Should you be going to seminars? Should you based on the, a lot of time that we all have in a day, 24 hours. And this is another concept, which by the way, a little bit of a side tangent, what is the difference between somebody that started off homeless and become a self-made millionaire or billionaire or somebody that started off homeless and is still homeless? The only difference is resourcefulness. Both started in the exact same place, right? So when we understand that concept, you need to realize that there's always somebody that has it worse than you, but they're being more resourceful. They're learning better things. They are feeding their brain with good stuff on a consistent basis, which is why they're growing. And this is why it can become frustrating for some agents when they see somebody that's a new realtor blowing them out of the water and they've got years of experience and they're struggling. Well, it's because they're actually being resourceful and putting good things into their brain. So what you need to start doing is auditing on a daily basis. What are you consuming your mind with? Because that ultimately becomes your thoughts and your thoughts become your actions and your actions determine your success. Now, the second thing when it comes to mindset is, are you taking care of yourself physically? And I'll give you a bit of a story here and then I'll relate it back to the importance of this. My personal physique is always a direct reflection of how things are going in my business and my life. And so some people are going to say, well, Mike, that means if you're going up and down and all around and you're out of shape, but then you're in shape, that means you have no emotional control. Well, the truth of the matter is that in the past, I wasn't that great at controlling my emotions when it came to handling stress and um, feeling overwhelmed and anxiety and depression and loneliness and all of these different things. So yeah, in the past, you can go back and look at some of my YouTube videos from 2021 and you'll see that I'm out of shape. 
and things were happening in my life that were not great. And so it's actually really interesting to see. Now I'm in a different place. I've worked a lot on myself personally over the last number of years. So now I can more or less, I'm not in the best shape right now. I'm in decent shape getting back there, but that's because I'm now better at being able to manage the stress and through personal development of the things I'm putting into my brain, like coaching, like books and like podcasts, I'm able to now maintain, which is really important. But taking care of yourself physically is imperative to success. And there's a direct correlation between people that are healthy and fit and their success and their level of success compared to people that are unhealthy, overweight, obese, because there's a couple things that factor in here. The first is confidence. I see so many people that, for example, are fearful to get in front of the camera. But if you took better care of yourself and thus you felt more confident because you looked better than you previously did, then you're going to be more confident in front of the camera. Also, it comes down to energy levels. If you're putting good fuel into your body, if you're taking care of yourself physically, you're going to have more energy to operate at a higher level for a longer period of time. So when you see some agents that are putting in a 12 hour a day and they're burnt out after like one or two of those, well, they're usually not feeding themselves with anything good. It's like, if you have an exotic vehicle, do you put premium fuel into it or do you put the average fuel into it? You have to put premium in order for it to operate at its capacity. And the same thing goes for you as an entrepreneur. You look at anybody that's winning at a high level and almost every single one of them takes good care of themselves. And they're able to sustain without burning out these extended lengthy periods of hard work ethic because of the fact that they're fueling themselves with the right things. Now that leads into the third thing and the fourth thing is truly the most important and that one concept that changed my business forever. But the third thing I wanted to talk about is, are you investing into yourself? And so where I see a lot of agents go wrong is that they are trying to do it all themselves by saving money. And what I mean by that is that they just binge content on YouTube to learn instead of investing that money into programs, coaching, mentorship, mastermind, seminars, whatever, to shorten the learning curve, to just learn from somebody who's done it. So one of the concepts and the mindsets that agents who are struggling have is that they feel like because they can do it, doesn't matter when, but eventually they can do it. They're just going to do it themselves. And so what happens here is they waste 50 hours over the course of months trying to learn something on YouTube or on Google or whatever that's free. But what they're not accounting for is how much their hourly rate is worth. So even though it's free, you're investing time, time is money. So if you're investing hours learning something by yourself just because you could do it, Whereas you could invest a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand over here to learn it in a fraction of the time and go straight to what's proven to work, then you're going to struggle for a very long time. And this is where the concept of investment versus expense comes into play, where so many broke agents look at money going out as an expense, not as an investment. It's an expense if you don't do anything with it, or if you spend money on things that don't help you grow, like eating terribly and watching other stuff that you shouldn't be. But if you're investing it into your business to shorten the learning curve, to go faster to a proven path of action, then as long as you reallocate that time into income producing activities, your income will go up. So you really need to understand that concept of investment versus expense and how are you investing into your business? And the last concept that I said is really important is having standards for yourself or core values. So what I will do is I will overlay here my personal nine core values. And these are what I live by in every aspect of my business and every aspect of my life. And so what most agents don't understand is that you don't achieve your goals, you achieve your standards, your habits. So a lot of agents are just throwing out these new annual goals and their big goals that they want to hit. And that's great. That's step number one. But if you don't have standards that align with the type of person that will achieve those goals, you'll never get there. So you need to understand that your income is a direct reflection of the type of entrepreneur that you become or that you are currently. So if you're making $50,000 a year, which is okay, and you want to make $100,000 a year, if you just say that you want to make $100,000 this year, but you continue to have the same habits and standards that you did as a $50,000 per year entrepreneur, 
you're gonna make $50,000 again this year. You could say you wanna make 250K, 500 a million. It does not matter you will continue to forever make $50,000 per year. And that's because it's predicated on your standards and habits, not what you say you want to get. You do not get your goals, you get your standards and habits. So when you look at some of mine, for example, you look at base hits. Well, that is focusing on consistent singles instead of infrequent home runs. I don't swing for the fences and just magically overnight some strategy works and it makes me a millionaire. I just do this right things every single day for years on end, and then it gets me there. Or you look at one thing, I'm never distracted when it comes to should I focus on this, should I focus on that, because I pick one thing and I do only that one thing until I become great at it. And then once I become great at it, then I add something else. The man who chases two rabbits catches none, I never try and do things simultaneously. Look at delayed gratification. Well. I never expect instant results from anything that I do. If I can't commit to something for a lifetime, I don't even start it. And so when you look at my core values and you should instill your own for your life, is that if I know that I operate using these core values with everything that I do, I'm guaranteed to win. So now that removes the thought and the stress and the ambiguity from executing because of the fact that I've got these habits and these standards and as long as I adhere to them, I'm gonna win. So now let's move on to environment, right? So we talked about mental, now let's talk about environmental. Both are equally as important. And so the typical quote of, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with, who are you surrounding yourself with? And there's a concept that's really important that I wanna break down here, which is anchors versus propellers. And so there's two different types of people in life. That's it. People who propel you to where you want to go, propellers, or people that anchor you to where you still are today and to where you'll forever be if they stay in your life. Anchors, propellers. There's no middle ground. There's no, well, they're a propeller sometimes and an anchor another time. It is black and white. If they are ever an anchor, they're an anchor. Even if they've got elements of propellers, they're an anchor. And so one of the exercises you could do is look at the top five, 10 people that you talk to most frequently. Go look at your last text messages and audit, are these people propelling you to where you want to go, encouraging you, giving you constructive criticism, calling you out when you're not living up to your standards? And these are people that are going to propel you forward. Or are any of these people complaining, blaming, anchoring? Do they not believe in you? Do they question your journey? Do they tell you you should go back to your job? Do they think you should be doing this versus that? Like, there's two types of people. And once you can start this annual convergence of the people that you surround yourself with, yes, your circle is going to get smaller if you want to win. I know a ton of people that win at a way higher level than I do. The circle that they operate in is very tight. It's very small. And so do you want to be average and hang out with a bunch of people, half of which don't want to see you win? Or do you want to be excellent and win and have a smaller tight-knit circle of people that are not just going to encourage you and believe in you, but also people that are in my life, that are in my inner circle, will also say, hey Mike, you didn't live up to your core values when you were doing this. Or they'll call me out when I'm not living up to my potential, which is equally as important because all too many people surround themselves with cheerleaders. And cheerleaders are the people that, even when you're not living up to your potential, they tell you you're doing amazing. Well, that doesn't help you at all. That helps you stay stuck exactly where you are. The other thing that's really important is auditing in terms of your environment, where you're actually working out of. You can see me in my studio here, and I built this out in the kind of dream way that I wanted to build it. And when you look at my studio tour, and if you want to check that out, just drop a comment and we'll send it to you. Um, but this is a very well thought out design studio that is conducive to growth. And so there's elements of warmth in here. It's inspiring. I can open up the curtains right here and I've got the lake in front of me in, in my lake house. And so I get this nature and this energy from the water and it's a really nice space. And so I spend a lot of time here. I want to invest into making sure that the space I'm spending time in is an environment that's conducive to growth. You'll see if you look around here, it is insanely clean. It is super tidy. There's no cables running everywhere. Everything is dialed. 
And that is important because when I see cables all over the place, I get stressed, I get anxious, it's cluttered, it's dirty, I don't like it. And when you see that kind of mess, it affects your environment. It affects your mindset because you're a byproduct of your environment. So ask yourself, is the space that you're working in, whether it be your real estate office or your home office, or wherever you're working out of, is it a place that gives you peace? Does it give you inspiration? Does it give you clarity? Does it get you pumped to work? And do you enjoy being in there? I've sent diffusers in here that give off a certain scent that make it very calming and peaceful for me to work and enjoy it. So you also have to look at the environment that you're around. And the last thing that I wanna say related to environment is, are you surrounding yourself with people that are at a higher level than you? And so I went through a period, I think it was 2021, 2022, where my income was stagnant. It was the first time ever that my income plateaued. And when I started to reflect on that and why my business is now exponentially scaling, is during those years, the only people I was really conversing with and talking with were making less money than me. And they're great people, they're great friends, I'm still great friends with them and that's okay. But I wasn't surrounding myself with people that were ahead of me. So that's why this year when I invested in the coaching, I invested in the coaching with people that are making multiple eight, nine figures. There's some billionaires in my coaching group now. And so I needed to put myself where I'm the smallest person in the room. I am the one making the least amount of money in the room so that I can see what have these guys and girls figured out that I haven't. And so you need to audit this because I see a lot of agents that are broke, for example, and they're hanging out with a bunch of other broke agents. And you're trying to brainstorm and mastermind and give each other accountability and feedback, but it's the blind leading the blind. You're all broke. So if you're broke and you're surrounding yourself with other people that are broke or struggling, what credibility do any of you have to give each other advice? You're all struggling. So you need to take a step back and start to surround yourself and put yourself in rooms with people that are making 2X, 10X, 5X what you're making in order to make sure that you can start to be in proximity because proximity is power. You wanna be in proximity with people doing a lot more than you. Now, if you would really like to know the habits that you need for your own business in order to break seven figures as a realtor, feel free to check out the next video that it will have pulled up here. It will not only give you a blueprint, but these certainly are things that your broker will not be sharing with you at any brokerage. So if you have any other questions, drop a comment below. Otherwise, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I wanna see you win, and I wanna see you on my next video.